Welcome to the final lesson of chapter one. Well done, you've made it this far, you're doing great. So chapter one has all been about sketching in SolidWorks and sketching is really the fundamental to part modeling in SolidWorks. So it may be a bit of a boring topic, especially if you know a little bit about this already, but for the complete beginners, I mean, this is where you start. You have to start with this sort of information. Once you get used to it, you can pretty much draw whatever you want and model whatever you want, but it really comes down to these fundamentals of sketching in SolidWorks. So what are we going to do for the last lesson of the chapter? And what we'll probably do for the other final lessons in each chapter is to do a bit of a, a review and a little bit of a put you to the test kind of exercise. So what we have here on the screen is actually the sample CSWA exam and we'll cover more of the exam later on as we complete this series but uh, we're just going to have a quick look at this for the moment. So this is the CSWA uh, sample exam and you can download that in the description of this video. So open that up and you want to go to this page here which is part two modeling. What we're going to do in this lesson is using all that we've learned so far with sketching in SolidWorks is to recreate this model using all our sketching tools, dimensioning, uh, sketch relations, and even some variables where it has these A and B um, notations. We're going to recreate this. And then to finish, we're just going to do a simple extrusion to create the final part. In chapter two, we'll start to move on to actually extrusions and cuts and more of that 3D modeling. But in this lesson, you'll just get a very small taste of what it about. So if you want to challenge yourself, I recommend to pause the video at this stage using the sample exam in the description of this video. You should be able to download it and go to this page, the part two modeling, and try and recreate this. You don't have to extrude it at this point, but just try and recreate this sketch using all these dimensions and any relations like these tangent relations here, which was also actually covered in the previous lesson. Some of that was covered. And then you want to get to a point where the sketch is completely ready. And if you want to push yourself a little bit further, use uh, variables for these as well. So you might make variables of, you know, overall length and overall height or width, then going on to the next page and actually setting in those variable values. So pause the video if you want the challenge, try to complete the challenge or this exercise and then come back. And what I'm going to be doing is actually going from scratch right to the end of making this part, just so you can see how I would do it. All right, so if you just pause the video and try to complete the exercise and you completed it, great. You're probably ready to move on by this stage into chapter two. Otherwise, if you struggle a little bit, that's fine. That's now let me do it and you can see how I do it. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is we're just going to put this off to the side. We need to, of course, create a sketch or a model so we can go to the new. We want a part file and we click OK. With our model ready to begin, we need to pick a plane and design intent will be covered, I think, in the next chapter. Um, but for the moment, we need to pick a point of where we want the origin to be. The origin point is simply the zero, zero point of the model, the absolute center of the universe of the model, basically. And you want to try and pick a point that works with your model as you go forward and start extruding and such. This kind of comes with practice of just knowing where to put it or the best places to start your model. Otherwise, try and look for features in the model that kind of represent a point to use. And looking at this, I mean, it's quite an odd looking shape. So you don't really have any sort of corner mark or any real set area, but we do have this center point of the circle. So in this case, I would actually use that as my origin and build the model all around that center point. So you, here we can see it from a side profile and in an isometric, it'd be right in the middle of that cylinder. So it'd be right in here. That's where your origin would be. And you also want to look at how the model is structured. So I generally try and follow the reference working files we have. And you can imagine this view being probably the front view and this being a side. And then this, of course, is your isometric. So try and build around like that. There's no point putting this front view on the top view unless you really had to, unless you had some specific reason to do that. But otherwise, that's my front view. So that's where we're going to start our first sketch would be on the front view. If you can imagine that face of the sketch being here and then extruded out. So we want to start a sketch on the front plane. 
I'm going to have to sort of switch back and forward between this window. But what you want to do is first just start roughly sketching in the shape as best as you can. And in this, I'm going to use a lot of um, shortcuts and such as well. So try and keep up with that. So we got a circle there and then we have kind of like this cut and a bit of an arc and then it drops down another arc and then across. So let's just try and quickly use our lines and our arcs to draw that shape. So selecting my line, I'll probably start from here. I know it goes up and across and across and then I know it cuts down. Oops, so I made a little bit of a mistake there, but I can just go back and delete those two. Going back to my line again. I know there's an arc here, so going back to that point and then dragging it out a little bit so that arc begins. Uh, and then what do we have? We have the arc goes up to the top and goes back so we can come across here. There's a little 45 again, another cut down here. Uh, then it goes across here. We have another arc, so bring it back to that starting point. Try not to do a full circle because we know it's going to be tangent. So you don't want to be kind of locked in with any relations. So you, you sort of want to get it to a point like here. And then we have our secondary arc. And then I think we have our third arc, don't we? So we bring it back to here. So you can see it kind of wants to do a 90, but we just want it to like be here just in case we need to fix it up. And I'll just check that because that doesn't seem right. Okay, so we got one arc and then it turns in. So I actually did these arcs the wrong way. So we can just go back, delete those, go back to my line. So that first arc was this way and then it went back that way. So you can see here it's trying to do a really weird sort of one. So we'll just, let's just drop it here, going back to the point, back over, and then it goes across. And then it goes 45 and up, but I don't want another secondary line here. So I'm just going to go right up to this point. Okay, so we got a very, very rough shape there, but now we can start putting in our relations and dimensions and tidying it up. So the first thing I want to do is do this circle in the middle because the first dimension that you place, the rest of the model will automatically adjust to it without throwing everything out. So if I put 14 for this, which is 14 mil, and you can see it sort of throws out and comes back down, but everything's still where it is. If I'd start with another line, it might start to throw out the circle. And anyway, it's just user experience. I know what it's going to do. So that really bases the rest of my model around that point. The next thing I want is any relations. You want to do your sketch relations first and then do your dimensions afterwards. Uh, it just makes things a little easier. So we want to put in some, can we do a 45? I don't think we can. No. Okay, we'll come back to those ones. We do have a tangent here already. If you don't see your sketch relations on screen, we you can drop this view icon down and enable the view sketch relations. Otherwise, we need a tangent here. We do know that we have a tangent here already and we have one here. So those are fine. So we just need one tangent relation there. And we also need this center point to be coincidental on this line. And if we move it around, we'll see if it's going Going to break things too much. It uh, doesn't look like it. Let's just see what happens. So we'll hold down control, click the center point and the line, going to make coincident. And it has thrown it out a bit, but that's fine. We can, you know, whoops, and I accidentally went. If you accidentally do do this, see, see I've actually rotated it because I was holding down the middle mouse button. Just click on the sketch and then go normal to, and that's going to throw it back to looking at that sketch uh, front on again. So here we've kind of made a little bit of a mess of our drawing, but if we just sort of move things around, we can probably get them back into the correct place. It can be quite frustrating sometimes to try and fix things up, but uh, see how we go. And if you find it really just doesn't work, just delete the line and just put another one in. Like there's no harm in just doing that. Uh, we can sketch, uh, trim this off. So all this is sort of like in the wrong area. We need this back around here. And we've got our tangents in here now. So we can start actually adding some dimensions. So let's have a look what we have and try and place the dimensions as they are with our reference images as well. Um, let's begin with the angular dimension. So we know all these are 45. This one's 45 and this one is 45. And this one is not 45. It's got a different angular dimension. Okay, so this one, we might delete this line because it's a little bit different to what it should be. 
Uh, sometimes it can be really frustrating when, with uh, what SolidWorks wants to do and what you want it to do. Okay, so we have all those. Let's see what else we can do. We can. It's good to try and base, start dimensioning things away from our origin point, just so it can kind of constrain outwards from that point. So let's start using these dimensions here. So we've got 14 and 14 from the corner. Uh, so if we go from the center, this one is 14. And this one to here doesn't want to play nice. We could try that again, just escape when it doesn't work. Okay, there we go, 14. Okay, and again, that's really thrown it out, but we just need to go through, start adjusting things so they play nice again. So you can see what I mean. Sometimes you just have to throw things back in place. And if it's really too difficult, just delete it and then add the lines in manually. The next ones we need are this seven. And this one is also seven. We have a total height of 32. We have a 10 to this location. And we also have an angular, angular, angular dimension of 10 degrees. So it's getting there. It's still quite thrown out of proportion, but we can uh, try and adjust this a little bit. There we go. And what's next? So we have a radius of 19. We might as well put this one in. There we go. What else? We have a radius of five that might help tighten this up a little bit if we put the five in. And a radius of 29 for this one. But yeah, let's, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens if we do this one. Actually, let's first, we're going to try and put this coincidental in here. And then we're going to try and try and adjust it out a little bit. Let's see how we go. Really doesn't want to play nice, does it? Okay, that's, oh, geez, it's really messing up on there. Okay, what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm just going to, I'm going to delete that one for the moment, come back down, go across, draw that in. I'm gonna try and make these back to tangent, which was incorrect. It should be actually the other way. Selecting these two, making them tangent. I think what we need is to put some of these lines, like more dimensions around here before we can get that coincidental in place. So in some cases, you can't put those sketch relations in first. You have to do the dimensions so it'll actually work. Uh, so what we want here is 29. This one is 5, 24. And what else do we need here? So we can see this arc in the base here is really messed up. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna delete all these parts and come back and do them again. So we're gonna pull this one across. So we've got our 19, we've got our 29, we've got our five and our 24. So all this is pretty much in place. It seems a little high though. So I think we just need to bring this down a little bit like that. And then we need a line here and we're gonna go across. We have 29 to this. So let's chuck in this 29 at least. So that might help. Okay. And then we just need these last curves coming in. Might try and use a three point arc. So I'm going to go one, two, and just like make it a little less steep. And then same for here one, two, three. So that's tangent. We need to make this tangent as well. Uh, we need a dimension back on this one, which was five. And I think now we'll be able to put in that uh, coincident relation. So yeah, there we go. That's working in this case now. We can tighten that a little bit. We can then give it a height to that point, which was 19. Looking much better now and a radius of 29. Okay, so the final, if you can go through if you want to, you don't, have to but it's nice to just clean these up a bit so you know where your dimensions actually are and when you're looking at the reference image you know you're looking at the correct oh see we can see this one should have been 14 so we know this is wrong because we had it matching our reference 
And that's pretty much it. Now to save our work, because we don't want to make a mistake here, don't click the cross because that's going to exit without saving any changes. So you want to click on the top one. And at least now you can go ahead and save your work as well, which of course you do by going to file and save or control S for save. Uh, we'll go back into our sketch. It's good practice, really, really, really good practice to always save your work. <laughs> Whenever you make changes, save your work. There's no point doing three hours of work only for solid work to crash and you just lose everything. Get used to saving. Um, so we just need some dimension that is going to finally constrain the rest in here and that would be a overall height and an overall width. And if we go back to the um, reference image you can see we have a variable global variable of a and b so we can actually go to our create our variables now so we can go to tools and equations and our first one is a and i might just make that a length just so i know my own or you could actually put it as a uh, we're going to put in a default number for now it doesn't really matter a 100 and comments is width and then we need B, which we're going to say is just 60. I need to double check these, um, but this will be comment of height. We go back. It is going to say in the first question, A is 81, B is 57. A, 81, B, 57. I don't even want to change. 57. And yeah, just double check, 57. And there is a C, which would be, uh, okay, so C is the extruded width. So we don't need to worry about that yet. Uh, we can put C in since we're in here already, and it was a 43 value, and we're just going to make that the extrusion. I cannot spell extrusion. Okay, I know that's wrong, but we're going to keep it as that. Uh, and then we're just going to say OK. Go back into our sketch, and we first will do the overall length. And if you remember, you put in an equal sign to make it a global variable. And we want to select the A, 81, click OK. And then we want to do this top and bottom, equal sign, global variable, B. And even though we've done those, there seems to be one more thing missing because we can see it's not fully constrained yet. If we check our status in the bottom here, right about right about there it says under define so what we need to do is just move a few things around and see what moves so if we drag this okay so we know we know there's some sort of height some sort of vertical that's controlling this that is not showing up we look back at this image we have let's have a look we're kind of it's gonna be something around here uh, okay, I found it. So it is this 19 here. That's what we're missing. That's setting that base point from here. So it's locking it in. So if we, so if we go back, we add this final 19, click on that and make that 19. And that finishes it. Everything is locked in place. It's all black. It says it is fully defined. And so our sketch is ready to move on to the next part. So we can exit our sketch. And we need to now extrude it. So this is going to be more into the chapter two stuff where we start looking at actual part modeling. But to give you an idea, what you can do is you go to features. We want to extrude the part, give it some volume, and we pick our sketch. We are going to set it to a mid plane because we want it to be equal on both sides. We don't want it to extrude just on one side. And we are going to set the dimension to a global variable, which you can do also in this area go to C and we are complete but we actually made a mistake here we need to go back edit the feature because we need to use our contour we actually do not want this section here and there we go we finished our little model and if we wanted to go in and adjust any uh, the overall length or the overall width or probably an easier example would be this extrusion we might make this extrusion 100 mils and we can just do that through the equations dialog box without having to go into any sketch so that completes chapter one i hope you've enjoyed it now if you can do that you can move on to the next chapter and we can start going into more exciting stuff such as extrusions and cuts and revolves and really get into some more part modeling and so jump into chapter two and let's continue our solidworks beginner series